Hello, my name is Gang. My name is Lahari. Mohammed. Andrew. And we are the team in charge of the design of the Life Ring drone delivery system for Rip Current Rescue. Okay, so 40% of the U.S. population went to the beach in 2007. 2003 to 2012, rip currents are the primary cause of rescue. They account for 81% of the rescues. 2014, the rip current fatalities accounted for 79%. Rip currents form when waves break near the shoreline. Once they break, they generate feeder current that is moving longshore. Once this feeder current is deflected offshore, it is going to form the neck of the rip current. This is where most of the drownings happen. This is where the rip current speed and strength is very high. So beach usually consists of the headquarters, the subquarters, and the towers. Here you see they're divided into sections, section 1, 2, and 3. And for each section, there is a tower with a lifeguard whose main job is to monitor the safety of that specific section. There are three main victim escape methods. The first, they swim perpendicular to the rip current and parallel to the rip current towards the shore. However, most just float because they're unable to swim. And what's not recommended is for a victim to fight the rip current, which leads Obviously, um, the rip current is a lot more stronger, and those just cause the victim to drown quicker. There are many tensions among these stakeholders, uh, many being positive. Here, you see that the municipalities use the tax revenue that the businesses pay and to provide clean beaches, and then the lifeguards would provide safe beaches. However, the major tension here is that the beach goers, they don't really obey the lifeguard rules or regulations. The um, lifeguarding associations, they provide and train professional lifeguards, and these municipalities hire these lifeguards, and the manufacturers, they produce equipment for lifeguard and rescuing processes. Another major tension is the competition among these state municipalities, whether it's to provide the safest beaches, um, the best lifeguards, or the services or attractions. So the gap we've found is in time, victim survival time and lifeguard rescue time. Some victims cannot survive long enough for the lifeguard to reach them, shown as this red area. The problem is that rip currents are 80% of fatalities, 80% of rescues, and cause an average of 51 deaths per year. Lifeguards can reach a victim in a max of 90 seconds, but some victims cannot survive long enough, some as low as 60 seconds. Thus, there is a need for a system that can reach and assist at least 99% of victims in order to increase their survival time. Uh, we can increase their survival time by delivering a flotation device to them. Our life ring drone delivery system it involves a drone with two cameras. It will have eight interchangeable batteries. More can be bought. The flotation device holder and tether, which is the key to our system. The drone's goal is to supplement the current lifeguard rescue process by flying to the drowning victim and delivering a flotation device. Again, our tether system is the key. This allows us to keep the life ring near the victim increasing the chance of the victim grabbing the life ring while preventing the life ring from floating away from the victim. As the victim is generally panicking, they need the most amount of time possible to grab the flotation device. When a lifeguard identifies a drowning victim, they radio into the control room. Our drone will intercept that radio transmission, and while the lifeguard leaves to swim to the drowning victim, our drone will also leave and travel to the victim, where it will deploy its tethered life ring, which it will keep within range of the victim until the victim grabs the life ring while the lifeguard is still swimming towards the drowning victim. In order to verify that this system meets our mission requirement of saving lives and to determine the best design choices for such a system, we have created a simulation in MATLAB and Simulink. So the main linear dynamics equation is uh, mass times acceleration equals the sum of forces. The forces considered from left to right is the force of gravity, the force of thrust from the motors, the force of drag on the drone and the force of the life ring, which is decomposed into the, its own drag and its own weight. The main rotational dynamics equation is the Euler's equation for rigid body dynamics. We eventually derive angular acceleration, which we integrate twice to get the rotation values over time. So our main simulation model is shown here. First, for any victim, a chosen escape method and rip current properties are inputted to calculate the victim position over time. The victim's position acts as a waypoint to calculate the lifeguard position and drone position as they try to reach this victim. Using the lifeguard position and drone position, a data analysis block will be used to determine if the drone or lifeguard reached the victim and whether the victim survived. So here is some sample output of our simulation in MATLAB. Blue is the victim being dragged by the rip current. Red is the lifeguard running along shore and then jumping into the rip current to catch the victim. And the green is the drone flying towards over the victim. Notice how the drone reaches the victim before the life rug can. There are three 
design decisions set A, the flotation device, set B, the location of the drum and the flight path it takes, and set C, the battery. And for each set, we do either an AHP analysis or a DOE. So for set A, the flotation devices, um, after talking to many lifeguards and doing plenty of research, we narrowed down to four flotation devices, the life ring, rescue kin, life vest, and the Ultra 3000, which is an inflatable life jacket. Then we considered the factors of cost, weight, dimensions, and buoyancy for each of these devices. Our AHP results, the higher the utility, the better the alternative. The highest utility here is the ring buoy, therefore that's the best alternative. Yes, it is low in buoyancy, however, the buoyancy only matters when it hits the water surface. And then the effectiveness and usability are far more important, and both of those factors are the highest for the ring buoy. For further experiments, we considered a case study of whether a certain beach needs our drone. The beach we selected is Galveston Island Beach. So our first experiment is to determine the best path location and operation range. Uh, shown on the right is a picture of the um, paths and uh, locations that we have considered. And on the bottom left is the distributions we've used. So our results are shown here. The y-axis is the percent of victims reached in under 60 seconds. The x-axis is all the location path range combinations we've considered. And we want a threshold of 80% of victims reached in under 60 seconds, shown as the black bar. As you can see, the leftmost combinations are our only decision. Uh, so as I reiterate again, the, our system can work with any path and can cover three sections or less at the tower. The objective for our third design decision is to determine the best battery for the drone, considering the attributes of cost, capacity, and power output. Our drone performs three maneuvers, and the power will be recorded at steady state. So as you can see, in each of these three graphs, the green area indicates potentially feasible batteries. Two example feasible batteries are listed in the table below. However, the two life ring octocopter does not have any feasible batteries. It just has too much weight. The final experiment is to compare our drone system with the baseline lifeguard rescue. So the options of location and operation range of our drone is shown on the bottom left. The cost we consider for our benefit versus cost analysis. The first is the cost of life of failed rescues, which end up in uh, settlements against the lifeguards. The second cost is the drone base cost, which includes the drone itself and the cost of eight hours of training for the drone pilot. And the pilot's cost, which FAA advisories want as licensed pilots. However, we consider the case of loosening restrictions from the FAA so that a student can pilot can operate the drone. So how are we doing this is plugging in random current victims through five years worth, having each alternative try to reach the victim in time, and finding the time difference between the time victims can survive minus the time to reach this victim. Results indicate that the one section drone system is much better than lifeguard baseline. When looking at the time to reach, shown as normal distributions, we can see that the octocopter not only has a smaller mean, but also a smaller standard deviation. Thus, this octocopter is the best drone platform for our system. And finally, with the cost-benefit analysis, you can see that the drone with licensed pilots has extremely high costs compared to the lifeguard. However, if we consider the case of student pilots, we can see not only that the drone system can be lower cost, but also higher performance. For our uh, business case analysis, with a startup cost of $250,000 and ongoing cost of $400,000, which includes the cost of an FAA lawyer and a sales representative for municipalities. We expect to break even in five years with a return on investment of 22% per year. So in conclusion, we have found the best drone design for rip current rescue. We have found that our drone reduces the time to reach victims by 23%, reducing the standard deviation by 70%. We have shown for a certain case study we can increase the percent saved to 99%. However, due to costs, it cannot be recommended that this system be in place. If restrictions were loosened, our system will not only be better in, in performance, but also lower in cost. In short, our drone is another tool in a lifeguard's toolbox to help them win rescues. Thank you.